Good morning, everyone. How are you doing this morning? I can't hear you, but I just assume that some of you are doing well and some of you are not doing well. But I'm glad you're all here. If you're watching online, I'm glad you're watching with us. And uh, we are going to start our service as we often do, okay, like every week, with some singing. And we've got a wonderful team of singers up here and a wonderful band. And it is good to be together and it is good for us to sing praises together and to remember the truth about our God, right? And to verbalize the truths that we know to be true about our God and about our relationship with God and that we are made in the image of God. And I don't know, maybe some of you feel this way too or you know this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. Sometimes I make mistakes. And I'm not talking about just on the guitar. I might talk about it in life. Sometimes my intentions are good, but I fail. But the great thing is about my relationship with God is that failure does not define who I am. It's my relationship with God that defines who I am. And God gets to say who I am. Isn't that good news? Because it's not just me. It's about you, right? <laughs> so would you uh, stand and join us in singing, singing praise to our God? <clears throat> on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength My story isn't over My story's just begun Failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does I said failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Who Arrival's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. We're singing, failure's never final. Shame at the 
You're in the Father's house. Amen. Oh, it is good to sing and praise the Lord and to remember our relationship with him. And that he is our father, that he cares for us like a father, that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provider is what that means. We don't need anything else. We don't need to strive for all these other things. So seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added unto you. But he is our provider. To make you proud I'll never be more loved Than I am right now Going through a storm But I won't go down I hear your voice Carried in the rhythm of the wind To call me out You are across an ocean So I see so clear what it's all about so stay by my side when the sun goes down i don't want to forget how i feel right now Jira, Jira, you are
Lord, may that be our prayer this week as we walk through every day and as we face things that are gonna be struggles for us. May we remember that we don't need to strive after all these things, that you are enough. May we be secure in our relationship with you and to know that you are watching over us, caring for us, that we are more loved than we could ever be. There's no other, we can't be any more loved. And that's all that we need. Thank you so much, Lord. We praise your name and we love you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Before you are seated, would you turn to somebody nearby and say, I'm glad you're here this morning and it is good to see you. Welcome to church. Good morning, everybody. What happens if I push this one? All right. <laughs> hey, welcome to Sunrise. It's good to have you here this morning. My name's Cliff. I get to serve here as one of the pastors. Uh, you're going to be hearing from me in a few minutes as well this morning. Uh, but if you are new to Sunrise, it is... Uh, a privilege to have you here as part of our church family today. And I would just invite you, please stop by our information counter, pick up one of the gift bags that has some great information in it about the church as well as a gift, a free gift for you, kind of like salvation is for us. Uh, that's right. Thank you. Appreciate that, Michael. A little more of that I'm expecting today. Uh, Let's see, we have a couple of announcements coming up here for you today, and uh, we're going to start with our senior lunch. So a week from Tuesday is our next senior lunch coming up, and uh, this is not high school seniors, sorry, uh, but, uh, but if you're a senior and would like to join us for this lunch, uh, today is the last day to sign up for that. Uh, one of the reasons is we are pr predicting that a lot of people are going to be there. We're going to uh, take some time during that lunch to honor our founding pastor, Gene Kern, who went to be with the Lord uh, a month ago. Uh, yesterday, there was a celebration of life uh, for Pastor Gene. I had the privilege of attending as well as a whole bunch of us uh, in the room. And it was an amazing joy uh, to be able to celebrate the great work that God did in his life. And he was, he was our founding pastor back there in the mid-70s and, and really set a personality for Sunrise in so many ways, um, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about during uh, the message today. But uh, so if, anyway, if you are planning on coming to that senior lunch, uh, would strongly encourage you today is the last time. No, this is exhort you. Today is the last time to, uh, to be able to sign up for that. Uh, next um, uh, is that next Sunday, immediately following this service, is our annual meeting. And this is a, a, a chance to come together as a whole congregation. Uh, lunch will be provided, and uh, we are going to celebrate the things that God has done in this last year. We're going to share the vision for where we're going in this next year. Uh, you'll hear from all of our pastors, and, uh, and then we'll do a brief recap at the end uh, about the financial status of the church, where things are. Um, I, would, I would tell you that things are in a good spot right now, uh, but we'll go into a lot more detail uh, regarding that. So that's next Sunday, right after this service. Please go online to sign up for that, or you can sign up outside in the lobby uh, because we do need a lunch uh, account for how much uh, to, uh, to get for lunch. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be stuck with candy from Trunk or Treat. And uh, you like that segue there? Uh, 
<laughs> They're like, hurry up, get to the next announcement. Uh, coming up October 25th is our Trunk or Treat. It is a great uh, evening with uh, lots of people from the community that will be on our campus. Uh, we have a number of people that have signed up to have trunks out there and kids come by and they're dressed up and we give them candy. One of the things we're asking from you, our congregation, is if you're uh, willing, would you bring some candy? We need some more. We have a box right there by the entrance that you can stop by and, uh, and drop bags of candy in there. Uh, that would be uh, a real helpful thing. That way we can be sure that uh, everybody who has a trunk has uh, enough candy to give out on that evening on the 25th. Uh, I believe this is my final announcement coming up. And uh, yes, it is. We have a uh, need slash want uh, to have a few of you join us on our greeting team. And this is, uh, this is a really cool ministry. Uh, now, granted, if, if you're like I was in elementary school, um, where you really don't want to look somebody in the face and, and you know, you'd rather be, kind of be hiding, this is not your ministry. Okay, but if you're the kind of person like, I am so glad to see people today, we'd love to talk to you and, uh, uh, and be a part of our greeting ministry that happens here on Sunday mornings, welcoming people to church, uh, letting them know that we're thrilled to have them here. And so if you are interested in that, you can contact Pastor Jen and she can get you some more information about joining in on our greeting ministry. Uh, okay, at this point, I'd like to uh, invite our ushers to come forward as we uh, give together. Um, this is something we do as a part of worship, is we give to the Lord, and uh, uh, we give back according to what he's given us, uh, which is so much. Uh, so let's pray together as we um, worship through our giving. Father, uh, thank you for uh, just the privilege of uh, coming here today to gather together in the name of Jesus. <sighs> Thank you so much for the incredible gift that you give us of your salvation, Lord. Thank you that you provide everything we could ever need and abundantly more. And so um, this morning, Father, we give back to you. And uh, may our hearts be uh, in a place that uh, we are doing this out of gratitude, out of joy. Uh, and uh, Father, would you do your thing would you do your work uh, in this kingdom, in your kingdom, that more would come to know you um, through this ministry. We commit it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank you to our choir. Thank you, Aaron. Love it. Okay. Don't have to do that again for another month. Okay. <laughs> you keep me honest is what you do. Oh, good morning. I, as I look down at the Velasco's here, this is a good, uh, good transition into, uh, you know, Luke, when he's here, always has a few announcements he throws in. So I'm going to throw in my announcements here. Uh, and, and seeing Michael reminds me of this. Michael is a, a, plays a significant role in our men's ministry here at Sunrise. And uh, coming up here in just a couple of weeks, we have our men's conference uh, up at uh, Zephyr at, at What's that place called? Lake Tahoe. I've heard of that before. Guys, this is it. This is the last chance to sign up. And we have extra spots and I don't want to turn them back in. And so if you have not signed up for men's conference, ladies, if you have not signed him up for men's conference, do it now. Do it now. We, are, uh, we have to uh, make that decision this week, how many spots to send back. So uh, would love to, to have as many guys from Sunrise there as possible. Uh, today, as we jump into Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, uh, I'd invite you to open your Bibles and follow along. Uh, follow along on your uh, device if you have that. Um, we're in page 1 of your Bible. Unless you have a large print, we're probably in page 2 in the large print Bible. And uh, um, I will not have notes on the screen today. Um, however, they are in the Sunrise app. So if you happen to have your smart device with you, you can open up the Sunrise app. And uh, it's right there at the top. Genesis 1. We've made it through five days of creation so far. And, uh, and got into day six. And as we get into day six... At verse 24, God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. I love that word, good. We just talked about God, you're so good. I, I love the personal uh, aspect of that, of that rendition of the song. We're used to singing God is so good, but to make that personal and to look and say, God, you are so good. God looked at his creation. He said, it's good. And, uh, and then verse 26 is where we are today. I, I was assigned one verse to preach on today. What do you do with one verse? Um, it's a lot harder than you would think. Uh, I got stuck in the first four words, which was, which was kind of fun, but, but let's get into it. Verse 26 says this, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God said, let us make man. I'm going to spend a good amount of time on those four words today. Let us make man. We have to stop, especially when you're studying Genesis. You, you kind of need to stop and look at every single word. Um, and to, to look at that first phrase, let us make man. We need to back up a little bit. If I go to Genesis 1 and, uh, and start at verse 3, God said, let there be light. In verse 6, God said, let there be an expanse. Verse 9, God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. Verse 11, let the earth sprout vegetation. Verse 14, and God said, let there be lights. And all along the way, in those first five days of creation and into the beginning of day six, God said, let there, dot, dot, dot. 
okay, whatever it was. But then you get to the creation of man and God said, let us make. It becomes personal at this point. God didn't say, let there be. He said, let us make. Any any English teachers in the audience this morning? Oh boy. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of elementary English for for a moment. Um, Up to this point, we've been talking about God in the the third person. He, God, him, he he did this. and, And God said, you know, let there be. We're talking about something um, a little bit distant. But this is the first point we find God in the first person. And we find God in the objective form of the first person plural. I have been dying to say that forever. Um, I learned that in elementary school. Thank you. Um, The objective form of the first person plural, us. God said, let us make. What's happening here is something that is incredibly personal. God is taking, not just speaking something into existence, but God is personally creating here. And and then he gives us this word, us. It's It's a plural word. Which, which throws a lot of people off because God is seemingly singular, right? God is one. Why did God suddenly say, let us do this? Who, who is us? And, and there's been a lot of theological debate by people much, much smarter than me who have degrees much higher and more letters after their name than I do. But there's been a lot of debate about this. What, what is us? Um, some people believe in, in kind of one prevailing um, approach is that uh, God, this was us was God and his heavenly court of angels. Um, that, that they in, in their heavenly court uh, were there at creation. Unfortunately for that theory, there's not a lot of biblical support for it. Uh, there's, there's nothing that shows that angels existed um, previous to God's creation of all of these things. Uh, and then, which I think is kind of the kicker here, is that if you read Paul in 1 Corinthians 6, he makes it clear that, that in heaven, we will be judging the angels that we've been created in a position that is higher than the angels. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense that angels would be there at the creation of mankind when, uh, when it is those exact people that will be judging the angels. So that theory kind of falls uh, down. Now, I think most followers of Christ say, well, it, obviously it's the Trinity. Uh, but, but people studying this would say, you can eventually get there, but, but let's, let's take a few steps to get there uh, before we just immediately go, ah, oh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, there we go, we're done. How do we get there? How do we get there that, that God is in, in, in this plurality, so to speak? Let us. Well, if I go back to Genesis 1, verse 2, says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And we have the spirit of God immediately introduced in the second verse of all scripture. In in scripture, the spirit of God is introduced and, and we have God, we have his spirit. God created the heavens and the earth and his spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. But where might you say is Jesus in all of this? Well, the best place to find Jesus is usually the Old Testament or the New Testament, excuse me. Uh, We're gonna find Jesus in the Old Testament in just a moment here. The best place to look for Jesus is in the New Testament. And I go straight to John 1.1. And uh, in John 1.1, 
John starts with the words, in the beginning. A, a straight parallel to creation, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning. And, and in Genesis 1.1, it says, in the beginning, God, dot, dot, dot. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word. And, yeah, right? And so I look back at verse 26 and God said, let us make man. They were all there. He was there in his completeness. He was there in his plurality, even though he is singular as God. He says, all right, let us make man. All right. Now at this point, everyone kind of starts to shake a little bit. Like, well, what about the women? Well, what about the word? Okay. The word is this, that is the word for mankind. Um, it is formed out of the, the word Adam. Okay. That's the Hebrew word. And it's, the, it's, it's a generic term. It's for mankind. It would eventually become the proper name of Adam. But here in this context, we're talking about mankind. We're talking about people, male and female. And so let us make man. Let us make mankind. Let God in his wholeness create mankind in their wholeness. And we're going to go on to see it's male and female and, and, and many other things. And he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And again, we have a, a uh, first person, plural, possessive pronoun. Okay, I'm going to stop. Uh, the word our. Our likeness, our image. And we see this immediately. Is as we look over six days of creation, this is the first time we see something that God has made where God says, this looks like me. I, I looked in the, uh, in the mirror this morning as I was getting ready and I looked at myself and I'm like, that looked like me. That was my image that I was looking at. Now, I'm not going to say that that image was perfect and, and, and great. It probably didn't look great this morning. But God looks in the mirror and sees his image and it's perfect, right? And, and he creates mankind in that perfect image. And later he goes on to say, oh man, it's good. Oh man, it's good. You get that play on words there? That was for Randy. Uh, we're created in his image. Nothing else in creation reflects his image. People do. Now, there, there are things that point to him in all of creation. You know, I... I, I I love to be outdoors. My, my father taught me as a, as a young person to appreciate nature. I, I mean, I love to just go sit out in nature. I love to, at nighttime, to just stop and, and look at the stars and take them in. And look at, like, I see God at work. But that's something he did. It's not him. It's not, it's not his image. And yesterday I, I sat out while, I, while my son was playing football. Um, and every once in a while I'd try to hold my phone up without looking directly at the sun and try to pick, pick, take pictures of this eclipse that was happening, uh, failed miserably. But to, to think about the marvel of our creator, God, that would create this sun 
and, and then you have all these planets and the earth is rotating around the sun and every so often God makes the moon in its perfect rotation around the earth go right there in between the sun and the earth so that we see this eclipse. It's, again, it's just evidence of an, of an amazing creator God, but that's not his image. We are the ones that reflect his image. We are the ones that were created that way. And, and I think that's hard for people. It's, it's hard because um, identity is something that our culture spends so much time getting into. And, uh, and sin is something that has messed up our identities in so many ways. We're going to get get into that in just a second. But, but let me stop and, and go, okay, we're, we're created in his image. But then he goes on to say about people, he says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps along the earth. He says, let mankind rule over this earth and everything that is on it. I'm, I'm giving you people control. You get to steward this earth. You get to use that animal to clothe you. You get to use that animal to feed you. You get to use that earth and everything that's on it to take care of you. I'm giving it to you. You, you get to take care of this for me. There's, there's nothing else in all creation that he gives such a responsibility to. But he loves what he created in his image. And so he gives us that privilege. Now we, we messed that up along the way. And uh, I think the thing that I, I enjoy about uh, this morning's uh, message is that it's fairly short and sweet. So I, I I get to send you home with, with three things here this morning. And Jathan, this is my way of saying we're getting close. Because um, this is not where I landed it in the first service. Don't miss these things. Number one, created in God's image. There's a lot that our culture teaches us about image. There's a lot of what our culture says. Make sure that, that you have the right image as you go out. I lived in, uh, anyone here ever live in Orange County? Yeah, 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 right? I lived behind the orange curtain for a little while. And uh, I had a 714 number. But, but deep in the heart of Orange County, Southern California, there is most definitely an image that people bear. Um, I mean, it's just, and, and everywhere you go, this is going to exist. That, that you're supposed to, to look this certain look. You're supposed to dress this certain way. You're supposed to drive a certain kind of car. You're supposed to act a certain way when you go about. These are all things that if you, you have this correct image, it says that you're of a certain status, Right? And, and so if I, if I uh, back in the day when I lived in Orange County, if I, uh, and I used to, to work with, with young people there. And, and so, you know, if I, if I bought my clothes at the right store at Fashion Island um, and, and the right shoes that, that had just the right look, then I was credible. Um, you know, I couldn't drive my 74 Datsun B210, and, you know, when I was living there. But, but in so many ways, we put ourselves in those kinds of pressures to conform to an image that the world has said, if you do this kind of image, if you reflect this kind of image, then you're going to be successful. And God says, no, reflect my image. I could care less about the rest. And it's easy for me to point at Orange County or Granite Bay or any other place where it feels like hootie snooty and go, well, at least we're not like that. No, 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 no. 
We, we all fall into this, don't we? I mean, this morning I fell into this. I'm like, okay, is, what, is someone going to judge me because I don't have my shirt tucked in? Is, you, know, you know, my shoes need to be polished. I, why? Why do I worry about that? I should be worried about what the person who created me, I should be worried about living in his image. Not anything else that the world says matters. Second, second thing I want you to take home today. Don't miss that Christ is our identity. Our culture says, find your identity in, and it lists any number of things to find our identity in. Our culture says, find your identity in your sexuality. Our culture says, find your identity in your, in your, in your race, in your upbringing. Find your identity in the um, people that you spend time with. I've struggled with that along the way. I know, I, I, I've... Sometimes people joke around with me about this, but sometimes I struggle with it. I think I love to name drop and go, guess who I have talked to? Guess who I know? Guess whose cell phone number I have in my phone? And you find identity in those kinds of things. As a follower of Christ, we need to, as followers of Christ, we need to flip the script of where identity comes from and find it solely in the person of Jesus Christ. He is our identity. Any other identity that we find is going to fall short. Even finding my identity in my own family is going to fall short. I love my family, but they're not my identity. Jesus Christ is my identity. And finally, first, God's image. I'm created in God's image. Second, Christ is my identity. Third and final, we have position and we have authority over God's creation. He's given us authority over every animal, every bird, every insect, everything that walks and flies along the earth. Jesus uh, said in Matthew 6, and Luke said it last week, are you not of more value than the birds of the air and everything? Know that our value um, and authority, that we, we have value and we have authority and we have a position that is higher in God's creation than everything else. And that's not something that we are to, to mess with. And that's not even something we necessarily take pride in. It's something that we steward. It's something that we shepherd. And, and, and it hit me, it actually hit me right in the middle of first service when I was talking about this this morning. That, that we have this position of authority over creation, over God's creation. God, God looked at it all, said, it's good. And man, you're great. I really like creating man. And so man, you're in charge of it all. And I start to go, well, that's a little awkward. Can we really do this together? If we are all looking at Christ as our identity, Yes. But, but then it hit me this, in Genesis 1, God put man over the rest of his creation. In the Gospels, Jesus left his people to be the ones who would share his gospel. And so in the same way that we have been given a high position over creation, we have been given brotherhood with Jesus Christ to be the bearers of his gospel, to be the bearers of his good news. In so many ways to be his image bearers. That he gave us the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and, and if you ever want a really fun read, read through the book of Luke and then the book of Acts because they're both written by Luke. And, And the star of the book of Luke is Jesus. And the star of the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit working through God's church, through Christ's church. 
And there you find right there in Acts chapter 1 that Jesus is handing over the responsibility of uh, spreading the gospel. And he says, I'm not going to be on this earth anymore. I'm giving it to you. And so in the same way he gave us his creation to steward, he's given us his gospel to steward. And so if you know Jesus Christ today, if he's your Lord and Savior, are you ready to talk about him? Are you ready to tell people about him? Are you ready to share the good news? Are you ready to say, there's this Jesus and he, and he, he was the word. He is the word. He was at the beginning of creation. He was there and, and then along the way, God sent him to this earth in the form of a man. And he lived this perfect life on earth, sinless life. But, but the punishment for sin is death. And, and because God knew that we weren't going to be able to uh, atone for our own sins, of all of them, he sent Jesus to be the one, the perfect sacrifice that would die for our sins. And, and he would die a sinner's death on the cross and he, he would bleed. And that same blood is the blood that covers my sin. It covers your sin. And, and that Jesus would, would die on the cross, but then he would be in, you know, in the grave for three days and he'd be raised again. And he would walk on this earth for about 40 days and then he would ascend to heaven and sit down at the right hand of his father. That's great news because you know what? That's for every single one of us. And we share that gospel so that people would know that there is hope, that their image doesn't have to be found in their stuff, that their image doesn't even have to be found in their sin, that their image can be found in the one and only God through the person of Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be an image bearer. That's what it means to have Christ as our identity. That's what it means to have a high position of authority in God's creation. He hasn't only given us this, the, his creation, he's given us his gospel. And so let's go and give that gospel to a world that desperately needs to hear it. The final thing I would, I would leave you with today is this. Inevitably, as, as you're out there, there, there are some out here that you're saying, well, Cliff, this is all kind of interesting, but I, I don't know this gospel that you're talking about. I don't know this salvation that you're talking about. I think I try to be good, but I'm, I'm, I can never quite make it. I feel helpless, I feel desperate. Uh, and, and I'm definitely not a follower of Christ like some of the other people are in this room. And, I, and I'm here to tell, tell you today is you can make that happen today. Well, I should say, you can watch God's salvation show up today in your life by, by simply submitting yourself and saying, Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you forgive my sins? and make me clean, I wanna, I wanna be new. And accepting Christ's salvation for your life today. I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus and you're struggling through this, talk with one of us that's here today. There are a lot of people in this room that know Jesus and can walk you through what we call the plan of salvation. After service, we're gonna have somebody right over there at our prayer area. Stop by, talk to them. Help me know, help me understand this Jesus more. I'd love to talk to you too. Let's pray together. And as, as your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, as you're, as you're just focusing on God, what's your prayer this morning? Is it, God, I, help me to understand the image in which I was created? Or is it, Christ, I, I need you to be my identity. I've been finding identity in so many other things. Or is it, God, I, I, I know you've called me to be your ambassador in this world, to, to spread the gospel, and, and I haven't been doing that. Father, I need your, your help through the power of the Spirit to, 
to be your ambassador, to, to be one that would spread the good news. Or are you the one that says, I desperately need Jesus. Would you come into my life and forgive my sins? Take the next minute or so and, and pray and open yourself to what God would have, have you um, to do this morning. Let's just reflect quietly together. spirit that moves in our midst that speaks to us in accordance with your will that prays in accordance to your will with your will father help us to live in the identity of Jesus Christ And would each person in this room know you personally and intimately? Amen.
Don't forget on your way out, uh, sign up for next week's annual meeting and so we can be sure to have a good head count for uh, lunch, men, men's conference, and uh, go out there as chosen ones created by the Lord in his image, child of God. God bless you. Have a great week.